Hey, it's Eric G. Around the House is sponsored by Baldwin Hardware. For 75 years, Baldwin Hardware has been known for its first class quality and craftsmanship in door and cabinetry hardware. As an alumnus of the Baldwin Hardware Design Council, I can say I have seen the details and quality from design to the finished product. If you're looking for a new style and old world craftsmanship, I can tell you there is only one Baldwin Hardware. Check out what would look great in your home at baldwinhardware.com. It's Around the House. Hey guys, it's Eric G. We got a great show lined up for you here. We're gonna talk about my top 10 tips and maybe a few more if we get time for exterior projects. It doesn't matter if you're painting, doing a deck, or if you're building a fence, I've got some great tips for you today that could save you some money and make this job so much easier. These are those little things that people get totally tripped up on that can really reduce the lifespan of the project that you're working on, or even worse, this is one of those things that can really cost you some serious money. So sit back, hold on tight. We have got a one hour show here that is ready to rock and you'll be ready to tackle those spring projects. Now, let's get to the show. When it comes to remodeling and renovating your home, there is a lot to know, but we've got you covered. This is Around the House. Welcome to the Around the House show, the next generation of home improvement. I'm Eric G. Thanks for joining me today. If you want to find out more about us, head over to AroundTheHouseOnline.com. And of course, if you want to track me down, you can give us a call here in the studio at 833-239-4144. That number again is 833-239-4144. And hey, before I forget, I do want to talk about my shows that are coming up on my Around the House Northwest this weekend. If you want to stream it out there, just look for KBTV Fox 12 or you can head over to our YouTube page and see stuff over there. We've got a great show lined up. We've got a lot of great stuff happening in the, on the video format. So make sure you check that out. We're going to be installing a earthquake shutoff valve for the natural gas. We're going to be talking about so many different things. I do a test on deck stains to see which one's going to work the best in my climate. And it was shocking. It was pretty fun. And we're going to talk about a little of that today because we are going to talk about my top 10 really tips for exterior projects. And I did a test and this was pretty amazing. And I went through and I was surprised, but not surprised. I went through and did a test and I, I picked out five different deck coatings and thought, okay, I'm going to apply them per the manufacturer's directions. And I had some big brands like Olympic, Bear, PPG, Thompson's Water Seal. And so what I did is I went through on these on some newer cedar deck boards that were nice and dry and one by six, five quarter cedar and did sections of them. And then I went through and applied each one per the direction. Some were one coat, some were two coats, some were oil based, some were water based. And I was really amazed at how it turned out. So the first finish to fail that just basically disappeared was the Thompson's water seal. And what I did is I went through to simulate some scuffing. So I took about six or eight swipes of 400 sandpaper over the top of it just to see if we could give a little wear to it. And then I took my pressure washer with one of the rotary tips, not the really deep ones, but just like your soft wash type tip. And I washed over the top of it and it pretty much wiped the water seal right off of it. That just didn't hold up. The waxiness took, came off and it pretty much looked like brand new wood when it was done. The best water-based was the Bear. That went on there so well. I was so impressed at how that turned out. And then for the oil-based, the PPG went on really well. And that was the Prolux. I was really impressed with that. And so it turned out pretty good. There was The other ones held up fine, but I think there was two that, that really performed the best. And that was going to be the Bear and the PPG Prolux. And the, the Prolux I liked because it was a one coat and it held up really good. That didn't have any degradation of the finish at all. And then the Bear did almost equally. So I think the Prolux, because it was oil-based, was sheeting water just a little bit better than the Bear. But to tell you what, it was super solid. But that's really not what we're talking about today. We're going to be talking about my top 10 picks for exterior projects and the things that you can do to make sure that they go off without a hitch here this summer. And these are my little tips and tricks. First off, when you're building an outside deck, here's my first tip. Use joist tape to seal off the top of your framing. 
Now, this is a big deal, and it's been, boy, if you jump on some of the deck forum groups out there, you'll have the proverbial old guy, and I've been doing it for 30 years, so I almost fall into this, but you get the old guy going, I've been doing it for 30 years, I've never had a problem. Here's the thing, joist tape works. And what it does, it is a kind of a butyl-based, and they actually make liquid stuff you can paint on as well out there that does the same thing. But what it does is it's a black coating that you either roll onto the tape or paint on with a liquid. And it seals the top of the joist where the water tends to collect. And what happens is when you put a screw through it and hold a deck board down, it seals around that screw. And the why, really why this makes sense and why you need to take a look at this is because nowadays we're putting composite deck boards down that have a 30, 40 year lifespan. That's the warranty period. Even longer on some of them out there. And here's the thing. Now you're putting that on a wood deck that probably, if you don't maintain it, you've got a 15-year lifespan. So instead of doing steel, which is what people are starting to do, and it's even aluminum out there now, people are doing the joist tape to get that extra life out of it. And it makes a huge difference. It doesn't take long for water to get collected underneath that. Because uh, you think about it, that deck board is not breathing, and you're now trapping moisture down underneath it. And that can be a problem, especially in climates where you get rain a lot. And if you get mixed rain especially down the south where you can get summer rains that really bake it in there and just keep it damp. High humidity areas works really well. So take a look at that joist tape. Even if you're using pressure treated, it's a great way to go to protect that framing. That way you can do it once and forget about it. And that makes a big difference when you're doing that kind of stuff. So take a look at the joist tape. It's a great way to go. Number two here is when we're talking decks, make sure that if you're connecting it to the house, you're doing your flashing correctly. And what I mean by that is when you connect that ledger board in, I want to make sure that you're removing the siding off and you're attaching that ledger board, which is holding your framing. That needs to be bolted into the framing of the house. And when you do this, you need to flash around it to keep moisture from coming back there. And so what I like to see is your typical window flashing going in around that to make sure that you get it sealed behind it. Then you're going to put that through and then you're going to do metal flashing over the top of that to make sure that you've got that dialed in. And so that metal flashing is going to divert water to go around that rim joist out away from the house. So you're not putting water back in there and causing rot of the exterior surface right there. And then you're going to bring the siding back down over the top of that. And that way you've got water that's directing around that in a way. And if you don't, now you have water coming back in. And that's the problem if you've got, uh, let's say you've got an old 80s, 90s deck that you're rebuilding for the second or third time and no one's changed it. This is where the big fails are, is that we've really changed how we do this stuff over the years. Sometimes people, if you had a really good deck builder, they'd throw some 30-pound uh, felt back there to help with that. But really, that's where the issues are. So take the time, go through, make sure that you've got that flashed and flexible flashed correctly both of those materials in there and if you want to see a good video on that there's a great one over that uh, buddy did over with fine home building that really goes through you go over to their uh, youtube page and find that information over there maybe that's something i'll do here of getting in that flash correctly that could be a really good video maybe that's a pro tip coming up for my tv show but this is a great one to make sure that you're doing it right and if you can do that correctly you're gonna be dialed in and it's gonna look really good so, and that way you do it once and forget about it. The other way people do it, as I see, is they'll go through and stand the deck off the house by half an inch. And so it's not protruding in that. And they just leave a gap there. And then they don't let the, the, the house support the deck. But if you're going to do that, make sure you've got enough cross bracing and make sure that thing's locked in. So you don't drop, get 10, 15 people up there having your backyard party and having it fall off the house or at least start racking up there. So that house does a lot to solid place that deck. So if you're going to make a freestanding one, make sure you've designed that correctly and uh, you don't mess that up. You know, probably my best tip for you is if you're doing that freestanding deck and it's more than a couple feet high, bring in that engineer to make sure you've got that dialed in. Because I don't want to make sure that you got people out there having a good time. You're partying away. Last thing I want to do is see that thing come over. And then, of course, you got to be dealing with the railings and everything else. So maybe having somebody draw that up and make sure you're good. And in most areas, once you get up that high anyway, you got to pull a permit. So take the time, do it right, and it's going to save you some serious money. 
and that's going to be a smart one there for you. So that's that can be really a great way to do that. All right, everybody. Well, we got to go out to break here. Don't change that dial around the house. We'll be right back after these very important messages. Don't go anywhere. What's up? This is Sticks at Inya. And Satchel from Steel Panther. And you are listening to... Around the House with Eric G. Yeah. We love Eric G and you should too. Welcome back to the Around the House show. I'm Eric G. Thanks for joining me today. We've been talking about my top 10 picks for exterior projects, those tips and tricks that we can take a, take on to make sure that we're doing these things right and that these projects will last. And that's the key. I really like doing stuff that's going to last the longest and so you get that durability out of it. And usually that's just what saves you money the most. And that's the cool thing with that. So we've been talking about these exterior projects, what you can do to make them turn out a little bit better. Now, here's one thing. Before you get out and start painting your house this year and do those exterior painting projects, Make sure that you use a really good caulking. Don't go down to your home center and get that cheap painter's caulk because you're just going to be doing it again in the fall. Because here's what happens. It doesn't matter where you're at in the country. You're going to have expansion and contraction. If you've got pieces of vinyl that are painted, like trim, if you have wood, different materials, they all move at different rates. And so you want to make sure that you've got something that's going to hold up. And when you're going around recalking before you paint is part of the prep. And that is the biggest part of doing it is that you want to get in there, remove all the old caulking, take the time, and then go around and do all of your exterior caulking at this time before you paint. Now, of course, you want to be using a latex-based caulk for this or some of the other ones that are paintable. There's a lot of different urethanes and stuff out there. You just don't want to be using the silicone. But my favorite is actually a latex, and it is uh, made by Sashco, and it is called Big Stretch. What I love about this is it really moves more than any other caulking out there. And so that means you have a less chance of splitting. But here's one thing that's interesting that you need to know about caulking. If you have a little tiny just you, you like you did the trim it's gorgeous you've got just a little tiny bit of room in there that's probably the hardest for keeping that sealed up because you need a little more material to give it stretch right so if you want that caulking instead of having that 32nd of an inch gap you probably would have been better having a 16th or maybe even an eighth to put that in there and give it the most area to move because what happens is when you have that little 32nd inch gap in there, you're probably going to push it out when it expands and there's not enough material to stretch back in. So having a little bit more material is actually a good thing in there and it'll give you more durability in the long run. But using a good caulking like that is really key to having that project hold up and you're not going to be doing it back in the fall again or next spring again and going around it. And I did my house in black and so it was dark. It's awesome. I went around and used that and you get the extreme temperatures with darker colors. So you'll get some sun on it and that really gets hot. And in the cold, it's still cold. So I am in the shade and a lot of it. So it's one of those things that I get the most movement out of it. And it's been perfect for me. So use a great caulking when you're tackling a project like this. You'll be much better off. All right. Now, here's a big one. And this is one we're going to talk about for a few minutes here. And it's one of the biggest mistakes that are made in painting out there. Use the right primer before you paint. And that does not mean buying that gallon of paint that is paint and primer in one. All that means is that you've got a probably a paint that might be coverage, get a little more coverage on your first coat. It might cover up over a different color a little bit better, but paint and primer in one is a myth. It's a beautiful marketing ploy. Hey, this is better than everybody else because that's paint and primer in one, but you still need to prime. And the problem is, is that over the years, it used to be we just had one primer and that's what you put out there. But now there's probably half a dozen common ones out there. 
And that's a really big deal of using the right one. So for instance, if you're doing drywall inside the primer, if you've got new drywall, you want to use a PVA primer. That is a primer that will soak in and lock in that paint from soaking in any further. So you're not putting 10 gallons on that wall. It stops it, locks it in, gives it a vapor barrier for that dot to go through and suck that paint in. So that's what keeps you doing that. But I wouldn't use that on the outside of a house. That's where you want to use an all-purpose primer up there that's really going to work well. And if you've got adhesion issues, you want to make sure that you've got an adhesion primer where it says adhesion primer on there. Now, there's ones out there, too, if you've got peeling paint and there are adhesion primers that work well. There's even primers that have a fill Basic, you can go on there and spray it over the top of peeling paint. It's going to fill in all those kind of spots that you've had to feather out. It really gives a good surface to it for paint. And so that's another way to go. Now there's primers that are pH balanced. If you've got a, a block wall or a concrete wall you're trying to paint that's designed for the pH of concrete or concrete block, you've got that as well. And just as you've got that, you've got cabinetry and pr trim primers. You've got mold resistant primers, mold stopping primers. There's a lot of different primers out there. But generally, whether you're using an oil base or a water base, you want to make sure you're using the right primer for the project. And if you've got worries about, if you're going around and you're, okay, I'm going to start painting the house. And you go around and you're hitting a pressure washer out there, you're getting it clean, you're doing the pressure washing. And yeah, if you're blowing it up underneath some lap siding, you're doing it wrong. If you're going top down, giving the house a good scrub before you paint it, and you notice paint coming off, maybe that's the time you go, okay, I better put a coat of primer on this. Now, another trick too is if you're worried about it, you're like, man, I got a dark color. I don't want to put white primer on it again. Talk to your paint store and see if they can tint that primer. You can have them tint it so it's closer to the color of what you've got. It's good to have a little contrast to it, but if you can get halfway there from the white, you're going to look good and you'll be able to tell where your coat, coats of paint are. And that way you don't just have primer up there if you miss a spot. But if you can really get it close, then you have that contrast for painting and make life a little bit easier. But make sure that's going to get good adhesion on there. So if the paint's perfect and you're just putting another color over the top of it, maybe that's not needed and maybe that paint and primer would be great. But if you've got old paint, it's a deteriorated finish, it's washing off, where you've got areas where you've got that, make sure at least you prime that. And if you've got bare wood areas, do the same thing. Hit that first with paint. Otherwise, you're going to see the grain. It's going to soak in. It's not going to look like anything else. So that primer really helps you get the correct sheen over everything and make it look good. So primer is your friend. Use it. And usually it's cheaper than the paint. So save yourself some money. Put it up there. And then you'll be good to go. All right. Now, one of the biggest ones, we're going to have to go out to break here in a second, and we'll talk about this in the next segment. But before you tackle that outside deck, before you start doing that whole backyard project, plan ahead for come up with a five-year plan. What are you going to do? And here's why. If you're like, I'm going to build my deck and later I'm going to put an outdoor kitchen on it and I'm going to have a built-in barbecue and I'm going to have an outdoor fridge and a television. Before you do the deck, run the utilities out there run your electrical, run your natural gas, run everything that you need out there. If you're going to be going out and doing that for the for an outdoor fire pit, and you want to have that out there. Run all those things early so they're there. Maybe you're not using them this year, but make sure you plan ahead. And we're going to talk about this a little bit more when we come back because planning ahead is the key to this project over the long term. Because what happens is we get all in a hurry. Oh, I'm going to put the fence up, but maybe you didn't plan ahead to get equipment back there to to dig the pool or anything else. Now you're tearing stuff down again or having to move stuff. And that's when it gets expensive. So coming up with a great plan, and I've got some great ideas how to do that. We'll talk about that as soon as we return. You're listening to Around the House. We'll be right back after these important messages. Don't go anywhere. This is Ron Keel, the Metal Cowboy from Keel, the Ron Keel Band and Steeler. We are rocking around the house with Eric G. Raise your fist, make your stand. Welcome back to the Around the House Show. I'm Eric G, the next generation of home improvement. Thanks for joining me today. We've been talking today 
about my uh, top tips for those exterior projects out there, things that'll really help you get through it. Before we get back into that list again, I did want to talk about my nearly 400 videos that we have up, 396, and that'll be over 400 this weekend over on uh, our YouTube page, which you can actually find that, just Google up or go over to YouTube and go KPTV Fox 12 Oregon and look for the Around the House playlist over there. We have done some fun projects over there. And if you're looking for some how-to stuff we've done, some of our most recent stuff, I actually, these guys were amazing. Grand Canyon gas logs. I did the fireplace upgrade here in my house to some brand new gas logs. And these are absolutely trick. And you can do these inside, you can do these outside. So they are an outside project as well if you have a fireplace out there you wanna do. But these are a new natural gas log set or propane depending on what you've got. And it's the first set that I've seen where the gas actually comes out of the log. So it looks like a real fire. And so the, they've really built these logs out of ceramic like tile. So they look very real. And second of all, the flames come out of the logs themselves. So it looks like a wood burning fireplace. And it's a great upgrade to your own system right there and works really slick. Hour and a half, you got that thing knocked out and you've got a brand new looking fireplace. So really trick without all the extra construction work. But really, we've got stuff. I'm, I show people how to put up uh, mailbox numbers, bath fan maintenance. We got a new product that we took a look at. If you've got a flooded basement called Aqua Drain Caddy that helps clean up to that flooded basement or garage. We did a whole buying guide on siding and uh, sheesh, we talk about so many different things including what we talked about in the podcast this last week, the Roborock S8 Max-V Ultra. This is a vacuum cleaner, mop, scrubber, floor dryer. It does all those things all in your automatic stuff. So uh, take a look. Our biggest one we did here, which was last week, that thing's been taken off on the views. I show you step-by-step -step how to DIY stump removal. And that's a lot of fun. So take a look at that. We talked with Craig Elworthy from Lawn Bright. And then we actually went through and did some tarp testing to see what are some of the best tarps out there. So lots of different stuff. We've been talking about my top 10 picks for these exterior projects. What are the best little tricks and tips for this? We were talking about using joist tape to seal the top of your framing, making sure you flashed that deck when you're doing it and making sure you're doing the windows and doors correctly. Flashing is your friend when you're doing this stuff. So make sure that you've got that. And then before you paint, use a great caulking. I like the Sashco Big Stretch. That's my favorite. Easy to use, water cleanup, and uh, stretches the most. And then, of course, we're just talking about using primer before you paint. And when we went to break last hour here, we were talking, or last segment, we were talking about planning ahead for the future. And when you're working on a backyard project, this might be the time to sit down with an outdoor designer and draw out your entire plan so you can start knocking it out in plan for it. You want to run all those utilities first, like this was a big project, and then start adding the stuff on top of it. So that way you're not digging up that brand new lawn. That way you're not doing all those things. So really plan ahead. Come up with a game plan. If you're talented enough, get on, jump on, find a free program, design out your backyard, get it all planned out, make it look good, say, okay, here's my game plan. So come up with a good game plan and chase it from there so you don't have to do projects twice because that's where things get expensive. Now, the next one is planning ahead for extreme weather. And this is not some global warming discussion we're getting into here. I'm not going to start that debate on a home improvement show. Could be interesting, but I'd want to have everybody else involved on it so we could have a good battle. But here's the thing. This is where planning ahead is good. If you're building a deck cover, for instance, build it for stronger than the strongest winds you get. If you're in hurricane country, which is a lot of the East Coast and the South, plan for that. Build it like you got a hurricane coming. Build it so you don't have to worry about it later. Do the things that'll make it survive that. Spend the time. If you're in the Northeast, build it for snow load in the Central. Wherever you're at, build it for the weather you get and the worst stuff. So that way it's going to hold up. And that's really the key, building this so it's going to be there for the test of time. If you get high winds, did you build the fence correctly? Did you do it right? Did you put in the, the concrete? I know some people dry pack it, but did you put it in right? Did you put in post protectors to keep it from rotting out? What are some of the things? And that's another trick too. If you're putting in a new fence right now, new wood fence, take a look at post protector. These slide over the bottom 
of the posts when they go in. This is not on my top 10, but it's a cool product. So it slides over, seals it up. And when you put it in the ground, it keeps it from rotting, which is really cool. So you don't have to worry about those rotten off fence posts. Nothing worse than changing out rotten wood fence posts. This will keep you from having to do that. And if you've got them in the ground, you're like, oh, I wish I would have known. They do make a system that you can get a hold of those same guys, a post protector. And you can drill in and add that treatment to the post like they do to the, you wonder, you're like, wow, how did that telephone pole last there for 40 years? One, it's got the creosote over the top of it many times, but two, they actually go around and treat those posts every number of years, drill in, and they actually add a treatment to the inside of it so it breaks down. So that's a solid one right there. That's a great way to do that. So something to think about with that to keep that going. So plan for the extreme weather. Make sure you're, if you're putting in a sink outside, is it going to make it through a freeze? What's your plan on that? Are you going to blow it out every year like your sprinklers? What are you going to do? So that's another big one right there. Next up here is ladder safety and having the right equipment. When I am always like sometimes the worst on the ladder. Yeah, I have more than once stepped on the step that says do not step here or above this. Yeah, guilty is charged. But really getting some stuff to really get you there. And for instance, I've got a new project that I'm working on here. I've got some stuff. I'm tired of standing up on the big extension ladder. So I've been doing some stuff here to make sure that I can do things a little safer. So what I did is I actually went out and got scaffolding. So I have my own set. And that really can make a huge difference when it comes to doing a project and being on a just a good standard footing, right? Extension ladders are not fun, especially when you're trying to hold on, you're trying to balance, you've got one arm. If you could have a couple sections of scaffolding and get it done where you are working around, it's so much faster and you can really get the thing done a lot faster. So here's the thing. You don't have to go out and buy it. You can go down to your tool rental place and get it as well, but maybe taking some little steps like that to make a better deal with that. Now, the company that I went with on my, you get this stuff at Lowe's, so it's really cool. Take a look at build frames. So basically what it is, it's a uh, set of scaffolding, but it's expandable widthwise. So you can take it inside, outside. So it's a five by five scaffolding, but you can narrow it down for tighter areas. So you can go to, I think it's like a 30 inch goes up to, to 60 inches. But build frames, uh, you can get the frame itself for about $349, I think over at Lowe's online. And then, of course, you can get your different planks and stuff you need it. But if you're doing a bunch of projects, you've got your own siding project, you're going to be tackling these things. It's a good way to go. And then you own it forever and you'll never have to go out and rent it again. And when you want to go out and do stuff and, and set up scaffolding, it's not a bad way to go. All right, guys, we got so much more to talk about here. Getting the right safety stuff, having the harness for getting up on top of that roof. Fall protection, these are all things on the exterior stuff. I'm actually putting up my fall protection stuff here this weekend, getting that dialed in, so I'm good to go. So I finally got all the pieces and parts for that so I can make that work. And then there's one more trick I want to give you here before we go out to break. There's a company out there that's uh, based out of Australia, and you can get these online. Amazon has them. Lockjaw Ladder Grip. These are a thing that'll take your extension ladder and it will actually connect to your gutter system and lock it on there real quick so your ladder doesn't slide. So the gutters is not a structural thing, but if your gutters are installed correctly, it's going to keep her from sliding side to side. And if you've got your angles, it's just going to keep that thing steadied up against it. And it's going to lock that ladder in for you. So take a look at Lockjaw Ladder Grip. I have one on my house. I'm pretty impressed with it. I think they're smart to use when you're jumping on that ladder and you're getting up there with any kind of extension ladder. It works really well for that. And that's a good way to go. So pay attention to some of those things. They're pretty smart and they get the job done for you. And it's uh, really impressive when you get the right safety stuff. And uh, fall protection harness, they start about 99 bucks. There's a lot of them out there and uh, they work well and uh, keep you safe out there. Keep you from getting hurt so you can get onto that next part of the project. Had too many friends get hurt falling off. And if you can do a few things like that, it'll keep you around for the next project. Round the house will return after these important messages. Don't go anywhere. the around the house. 
Now Show, the next generation of home improvement. Thanks for joining me today. I'm Eric G. Really appreciate you guys tuning in. If you want to find out more about us, head over to our website, AroundTheHouseOnline.com. We got a ton of stuff over there. You can find, uh, of course, if you're listening on the radio, you can find the podcast over there, including our um, our week. Or basically, we have a special that comes out every single Wednesday if you're listening on the radio. And I call it our weekday special. We cover little topics. It's only about 10 minutes long, usually 8 to 12, 14, whatever we do that day. But it's a a little midweek catch up and we catch the breaking news, new hot topics, stuff that's happening, product recalls, all the stuff that's going on during the week. And that heads out and you can catch that anywhere out there on any podcast player. So just look for around the house. You'll see it out there and take a look at that. We do a lot of great little quick updates on that and hit some pretty hot topics at times. If you want to get a hold of us, you can give us a call at 833-239-4144. That number again is 833 833- 239-4144 and make sure you're catching our TV show around the house Northwest. Take a look on some of the streaming services. You can find it there or over at our website. All right, guys, we've been talking about uh, these top 10 tricks and tips for exterior projects that I've been working on. And here's the next one here. We were talking about having the right safety equipment next up here, using the right decking. Now, there's a strong debate out there. A lot of people go, oh, man, I love my hardwoods or I love my cedar, and that's awesome. The problem that I have with wood decks, and I haven't found a finish that's held up more than two or three years, especially in my climate, it just doesn't work. And if I have a a walkway to a hot tub or a pool or something like that, it just gets worse. Maybe I'll get a year and a half out of it, two years. It just doesn't hold up for me. And so primarily cedar or a treated wood, both of those I've just had tons of problems with. And yes, I've done the prep. It just doesn't hold up. So that's why I've gone to composite decks. Composite decks aren't all created equal. Some of the complaints in hot weather is that uh, if you get on a composite deck, it's a hotter surface than the wood. And that could be true. There are When you're looking at different brands out there and different colors, if you've got a darker color, of course, it's going to be more like pavement. But there are solutions in the composite world out there. For instance, Moisture Shield Decking makes a composite decking that reflects heat, so it probably is cooler even than that dark-toned wood deck that you have, or at least the same temperature. On mine, when I had my dark-stained deck that was next to it, I would go over to the From the wood that would be warmer, it would be cooler when I go to the composite, where typically it's the other way around. So that's something that's really cool as far as dealing with that. And then my favorite for, if you want something that is a premium deck that looks cool, that's about the easiest to install, take a look at Millboard. Millboard's a company, we've had them on the show before, you hear the ads sometimes in our show on the podcast. These guys here are absolutely amazing. I love them. They do a great job. And the boards are completely different than everybody else. They're molded. They're not that rolled on stamp. Basically, it looks like wood. These are molded out of real wood. So when you look at it, you're like, what coating is on this wood? It's amazing. And it is super durable. It's rubberized. And then the cool thing is, is that it's got a stone core to it. So it has a composite core on the inside. And then their trim pieces. Here's a little trick. If you want to do something super cool, they have trim boards. So if you want to do the outside radius, you can cold bend them. Yes, you can take that and do a radius around the outside. It looks like you got out the greatest heat bending stuff to bend composites, and you can do it cold. That way, it makes it much easier. And you don't have to go out and spend thousands of dollars on blankets to actually be able to bend the stuff to do something trick. So take a look at it. It is a super durable product. I love it. It's got a rubber guys coating, and you screw through the surface of the deck, and it has a self healing like rubber, like when you get a nail in your tire and you can't see, maybe it went through here, you can't tell. It's got that same material. So what happens is when you sink that screw, it just disappears. It goes away. You can't see where it is. So that's a great product right there. So take a look at the decking. There's lots of choices out there. You're not just stuck with what's in your home center. There's a lot of different brands out there. Find what looks good for you, but jump online and take a look at that millboard, guys. It's super cool stuff. It is impressive. And I've done some projects with it. They've got different textures and they even have composites on the siding now too where they have the cladding, so you can use that on the side of your house as well as on your decks and walkways. So really cool stuff. Now, the next one here is paying attention to your fasteners. 
What are you putting everything together on that exterior project? I hope you're not using those just regular gold universal screws because I tell you what, those kind of work, but they're basically gold drywall screws. They just don't hold up. You'll snap them off. The work, they don't work well. They don't hold things together long term. If you're going to use a screw fastener, my favorite ones are the Griprite Deck Force. That is a great way to go. I love those things. They make them for wood and for composite. So they really give you a great grip and they go in easy. They cut right through and they've got different screw threads for whether you're working with a composite material or wood. So you've got some options there. And of course, they come in a lot of different colors and match your screw color to your project. The last thing I hate to see is somebody putting in gold screws and they've got a dark stain and you see those screws. If you can do a, a black screw with a charcoal stain or a brown screw with a brown stain, just looks like you knew what you were doing when you got it. These details matter. If you're in a coastal area, you should be using just basic stainless steel. That is usually the best way to go. They'll be the most durable. It'll last the longest and you won't have to worry about corrosion. One of the biggest mistakes I see out there is when people are building fences, they'll get the they'll get the, the galvanized screws, the galvanized staples. And if you're working with cedar, that's just going to gray streak down every single one of those screw holes. And you're going to have a chemical reaction between that wood and the galvanized. And then it's just going to look bad no matter what you do with it. So avoid that. Use a coated fastener that's rated for cedar. That way, when you go through, you won't have all those galvanized stains down the front of it that looks horrible. So make sure you do that. Finding the right fasteners is as important as the finish you're putting on there. So that whole thing stays together and lasts. And when you're building decks, when you're building something structural, somebody's standing on it, use structurally rated screws and fasteners. If you're using Simpson or MyTech, use their fasteners that are meant for those. Don't be using the regular deck screws or anything else. You want to be using structurally rated fasteners to hold everything together. Because those are going to hold up. A lot of these other screws are not structurally rated. So if somebody gets up on there, that's how you see decks that have fallen down. That's how you see things that have not held up. It's because you didn't use the right screws. So structurally rated stuff that's going to hold up is going to be the best bet for you long term. Now, my last one here on the list is an important one. And I think it's something you should really pay attention to, especially in the evenings. And it's beautiful during the wintertime. Lighting is your best friend outside. Take a look over at uh, my YouTube page. We just did a lighting segment over there and it is dramatic what it changes your house at night. If you can do exterior lighting, and I'm not talking about getting the, the Costco solar lights you're gonna throw away next year. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about putting in great quality lights. It's gonna change how you do things. It changes everything. So getting those good quality lights in there, getting it dialed in, making it look amazing. These are things that are really do it for you. So spend the time, get it done, design out your lighting. Because what you can do is if you get the good stuff, I like using the WAC brand. They're a higher quality light. They'll last you decades out there. And then what you can do is you can take those lights, wash them off the front of your house. If you've got some brick, you can make that glow at night. If you've got big trees, you can light up the canopy. You can light up walkways. If you've got things like a larger driveway that you have to drive around and people are trying to run into the grass and stuff, you can light those areas up and really make a big difference around the outside of your house. And it just elevates the entire experience in the evening. It makes us such a dramatic thing. So plan for lighting. Low voltage lighting with LEDs doesn't cost you much as far as the energy use, but really pay attention to that. Now, if you are in an area, and this is where you got to be re pay really attention, some areas, especially coastal areas, some places really limit the amount of light. They have those dark sky initiatives and stuff. You want to make sure that you're following all those rules so you don't get a, no, a nasty gram from the city or the county or your township saying, hey, 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 you can only have so much light out here. Make sure you've got that dialed in so you're not breaking those rules. That's a great thing to check out and make sure you've got that taken care of. But really, guys, exterior lighting is the bomb. And you can really make some things look absolutely amazing. All those things that you've worked hard on, maybe it's a walkway, maybe it's stairs going up to the deck, whatever. Dial those details in and you can thank me later. That is one of the biggest things you can do outside in the evenings. And it makes people go, what did you just do? It's absolutely stunning. And it makes for a safer environment as well. So you won't have people lurking around out there. If you can see all the corners of the backyard, 
you're going to just be a little bit safer. I think it's great to do that. All right, everybody. Thanks for tuning in Around the House. If you want to find out more about us, head over to AroundTheHouseOnline.com. And then you can get a hold of us over there, including the phone numbers. You can email me from over there. And of course, check out all the videos. Thanks for tuning in Around the House. We'll see you next week. Love is a love song. Let's be lovers. We're all over the radio. Take my hand. I know where to go. All over the radio with you. Hey, it's Eric G with Around the House. Are you looking to grow your business? Need a spokesperson for your company? Maybe an MC for an upcoming trade show. Or maybe you want to up your game and shoot some promotional videos. My team of experts would love to chat with you. Head to AroundTheHouseOnline.com and fill out the contact us form, and we'll set something up. Thanks for listening to Around the House.